Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Museum of Video Game Oddities. I'm your host, Matt Fisher, and tonight I'm joined by a YouTuber, game collector, and beer enthusiast, Miss <laughs> Kinsey Berg. Hey Kinsey, how's it going? Hello! I'm really excited to be here. Video game oddities are one of my favorite things, so... <laughs> I, I knew they were and that, that's why I wanted to get mm -hmm. you on um, so if you don't know Kinsey uh, you can see her appearing on well firstly Metal Jesus' YouTube channel uh, as well as her own of mm -hmm. course uh, but you may also mm -hmm. see her at conventions throughout the US usually with very brightly coloured clothes, uh, colourful hair, <laughs> uh, a, um, a games controller in one hand maybe, and a glass of something hoppy in the in the other. Um, Most likely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, how did all that happen? Uh, where does the where does the love of video games, the love of beer, the love of colour orange, where does, where does it all come from? <laughs> well, video games definitely started really early on. Uh, my dad actually originally bought the NES for himself, which mm. is funny because he's like not a gamer anymore. <laughs> but his big thing is the kids couldn't touch the system until he beat Legend of Zelda. Uh, well, which so is quite a I, long game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I used to like sit there with like the hint book trying to like mm. help and stuff. And then finally I was like, <gasps> I get to play. You beat it. Like <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day when there was hint books and manuals and all sorts of things like that. I, yep. It's actually really, I, I don't know if it's sad because I didn't, I haven't bought one for years, but I saw that Prima Games um, is going mm -hmm. under. And it's a real shame. I mean, looking, I mean, I'm actually sat next to where all my video game guides are. Admittedly, most of them are Pokemon. But it's a yeah. sad thing that, you know, that that kind of thing won't exist anymore. Because it's like, if anyone wants to know how to play the game, it's usually in-game tutorial. If you want to, if you get stuck on something, it's usually just Google it. Um, it's, yeah. a, it's a shame that that kind of thing is is going but it's funny that you say that you sort of your dad bought it for yourself for himself first mm -hmm. um because that's kind of like not my dad but my granddad that's what he was like he mm -hmm. he, <laughs> he if you ever asked him if he was a gamer he would refuse to accept that that's what he was but he was he was always obsessed with like crossword puzzles and things and then when tetris mm -hmm. came out he didn't buy a game oh. boy <laughs> he didn't buy a Game Boy, but what he did get was those sort of LCD rip-off versions of Tetris, and he'd basically mm -hmm. play, play them until they broke, like play them until the every block was burnt into the screen, <laughs> and then he would go and buy another one. And then it, it was the same with when he first got a PC. He he. 1998 he thought you know i've got to i've got to get a computer i need to know what the internet is and my <laughs> uncle installed Lynx ls on there and that was just his life because he was a big golfer <laughs> and he was like well i'm too old to actually play golf anymore and whenever we would go around we'd find him on the pc but if you ever asked him if he was a gamer he'd be like no no not at all of oh, course absolutely not, not. Yeah. no <laughs> was that what it was was that what it was like with your dad a bit i mean you say he's not a gamer yeah. anymore but did he was he always sort of a reluctant gamer as well was this it sort of was it very much the entertainment system not the gaming system oh definitely <laughs> like he played zelda and he played like one football game on the nes and then, like, he didn't, we still had video game consoles once mm. he realized the kids liked him, but he didn't get his own again until I bought him a DS. Ah. And then he just played, like, all the, like, Professor Layton games and, like, little puzzle games, things like that. But he's still, I'm pretty sure if I'm like, hey, Dad, are you a gamer? He'd be like, no like <laughs> <laughs> well that's how it goes sometimes same with my wife a little bit as well because she's not a gamer but she loves puzzles and then every now and then you'll you'll play like a puzzle game and then you'll just sort of see her sort of glancing over a little bit going what's what's that <laughs> <laughs> yep so in, in terms of youtube you uh obviously you, initially you came to be known as part of the metal jesus crew but now have sort of mm -hmm. it's sort of become your own thing and you, you're now sat in front of a massive wall of games um but i mean how did how, <laughs> how did that all come back how did that relationship start and how did that sort of make you want to transition into making your own content as well um well i met metal jesus when i worked at another castle video games which ah. is a small video game chain um up in washington mm -hmm. and um he was a customer ah, okay. so that's how i met him and then we became friends and he asked me to be on a video and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> but then finally I did. And I don't know. And then to start my own channel, it was funny because in the comments all the time, they're like, Kinsey, why don't you start your own channel? 
And I was like, oh gosh, that sounds like work. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. I, yeah, and it is. Yeah. And I'm not a good editor. So that's why even now I've had my channel for like, what, three years? Mm -hmm. And I'm very slow at releasing videos because I'm so awful at editing. Mm -hmm. But I am finding that I really like kind of doing my own videos because I can make them my own thing. I can include beer. You know, <laughs> I'm in charge of what the content is. Like, it's really fun. I've just been ha trying to have fun with it. And I've met so many great people in the process. In, in fact, um, a guy I used to work with, uh, his big thing that he always used to say was, I, I, I really want to make a YouTube channel where I pair games with beer. And then you start doing it. It's like, damn it, she stole my idea. Um, so, so Derek from Sega, if you're listening, Kinsey didn't steal your idea. She wanted to do it all along. Yep. <laughs> uh, now, you, you have been on the channel before. Uh, not this show, obviously, mm -hmm. episode one. Actually, full disclosure, we have, this is the second time we've tried to film this episode. <laughs> It, it it didn't quite work the first time. It got up to about halfway, and then Kinsey's audio just disappeared, um, which is a shame because I thought we were really funny the first time around. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we move on. Um, so, <laughs> ig ignoring the fact that we have spoken about a week ago, um, tell us what have you been up to since we last spoke? <laughs> well, I went to Japan, and. I had so much fun. And it's one of those things where I've been wanting to go to Japan since I was like eight. Like mm. since whenever the first episode of Sailor Moon I watched is pretty much when I wanted to go. Mm. So, and it's been a lifelong dream. I'm like 33 now. I don't know why it took me so long <laughs> to go, but <laughs> I finally did. And I'm already going again next year because I loved it so much. And I did a lot of video game shopping. I was going to say, are you going again because mm -hmm. you loved it so much? Or are you going because you didn't have a big enough suitcase to bring things back? A little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it? I mean, it, having wanted to go for that go that for that for long and then finally mm -hmm. going, what was it like when you first landed? Because I remember I, I've been once and it was such a culture shock when I first arrived. Was it the yeah. same? Was it the same kind of thing for you? Yeah, it definitely was. Well, to start with, I was exhausted. Mm. <laughs> like, I had to like, the flight I got, I took out of Canada because it was way cheaper than flying out of Seattle for mm. when I wanted to go. And so that's like, what, two hours north of me. Mm. So I had to get there. And then I had to wait at the airport. And then I had to go on the plane. And then since there was that big, what's it called? Tsunami. <laughs> That one thing. of the airports was closed that thing <laughs> so i had to fly into a different airport but my i had to fly into tokyo but all of my hotels were in osaka so then i had to like manage the train system right off the bat and travel four hours and yeah because oh my a, goodness <laughs> that, that's a thing that in, until until you sort of look at really going you don't really realize to, to, like tokyo isn't actually a thing itself it's almost like five little mm -hmm. things and they're all yeah. they're actually quite far apart from each other yeah uh, it's not like oh yeah you're going to go to a big city and it's just one part of that no it's kind of like they're five almost mini cities sort of yeah yeah it's it's really strange because because when i i went obviously you and i would have done completely different routes you would have gone across the international mm -hmm. dateline which is mm -hmm. a weird thing to do anyway because i've done it going the other way but for me it, it was an it was an 18 hour flight um via germany oh my and <laughs> when you arrive it's kind of like you because also you're flying east at that point you're so tired all you want to do is right i just i'm just gonna go to mcdonald's or something i'm just gonna get something to eat and then you realize that not only do you not speak the language you can't read it either so yep <laughs> you, there's no like at least when you go to france or a country where you don't speak the language but you can't you can just you can at least read it and attempt to pronounce something but in obviously in japan if you know nothing and there's more than one script anyway it, like but if you don't yep. know anything all you can do is point and then present money and hope that they take the right amount <laughs> um and then obviously yep. you know and then it's a it's a really long drive because you think oh yeah i'm flying into tokyo and then i'm i'm good i'm gonna be in tokyo and then it's like no yeah. <laughs> you fly into narita and then it's like another hour or two drive to wherever we were staying um yep but the one thing that always um with i remember from it was um first i mean firstly we we took a kind of, we took like a coach trip to sort of kind of get us out of the hotel but it's <laughs> 
mm-hmm. when you start going to the markets and things, if you don't know where you're going or anything, you're looking at a map, even if people have no English whatsoever, they'll come and try and help you, which is really sweet. Oh, yeah, but I had that. <laughs> it's really sweet, but at the same time, it doesn't help at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> I had a lot of people like pointing. They're like this, and then they're like, <laughs> and I'm like, so when do I turn? I don't know. <laughs> you just sort of at some I turn eventually. At some point in your life, turn left. Yeah. <laughs> so but I- everyone was so nice, and like, even though I was like the first night, so tired, so lost, so everything, I still had like I was in complete awe. So I think this time around, I'm going to be a little bit more organized and less like wandery. So <laughs> that'll be good. <laughs> so I, I'm guessing as part of the initial trip and definitely part of the uh, second trip was to go mm-hmm. and find video games and well not just video games but mm-hmm. odd Japanese hardware and software I, I'm assuming yep <laughs> mm-hmm. which is which is what I like <laughs> because you're you're not you're not a, afraid to embrace the weird sometimes and that's why i wanted to get you on the show and it, it sounds like you've had plenty of inspiration thanks to your travels um so actually yep. with, with that in mind I, I think it's only right for the technically the first time ever um maybe the second but we, we'll ignore that uh, aff- officially <laughs> declare the museum open for donations uh, so kinsey <laughs> what would you like to Ooh. offer to the museum i would like to donate this crazy Yamaha Copira. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's it's giant. It's weird. Like it won't even fit all in the frame. It's actually huge. <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously, this is this is an audio podcast, but I am tr- I am recording mm-hmm. films. When you first mm-hmm. hold that up, it looks like oh, it's just the size of a laptop and things. And then you turn it, and it's like oh no, <laughs> there's so much more. There's it's some like junk sad. in that trunk. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. thick. Um, so, f- for those that have no idea, which included me until a few days ago, what on earth is the Yamaha Capira? It is this really weird version of the Sega Pico that Sega licensed to Yamaha, and it came out in 1993, and it lasted until about 1994. So, not long. <laughs> No. And what's so cool about it, though, is it does play Pico games, but it also has its own little library of games that's really only like at 10 or so games, like a handful of games. Mm. But it's it's kind of the definitive version of the Pico, though, because it has so many more outputs. It has MIDI out. Um, you could hook up a microphone to this like. Well, well, it just has. Mm-hmm. Well, being Yamaha, it, it, I'd assume there is some sort of. Yeah. Uh, well, the you said the microphone, but I'm assuming there's also, also like some music capabilities as well, because obviously it needs to sell mm-hmm. Yamaha products. But it, yeah, it sounds like it is the sort of definitive version, because if it if it plays Pico games, but then it has its own library. Granted, it's quite a small library. It's mm-hmm. weird that we didn't. Well, actually, I was going to say it's weird that we've never heard of this. But then the Sega Pico wasn't exactly a world bestseller in itself. Um, but I mean, yeah. So for those again that don't know what the Sega Pico is, it's esen- it's essentially um, edutainment. They're kind of their mm-hmm. their video games. It, well, it's, it's a video game console, except you put you also have a follow along book that has tabs on it, or so, and then you have a well, it's not touch screen, but it's kind of a pressure pad thing and it's really, yeah it's really hard to explain it's kind of it's three different things in one because yeah it's like a laptop that opens up you've got the book in front of you and you turn the pages and then you've got a thing with like a stylus or a microphone in front of you but then it also has tv out as well which then goes to yeah. and then you follow along with things on that the only thing the only reason i know that is because i've been writing a, a script for my next power rangers series video and it talks about and mm-hmm. I'm talking about the uh the Japanese video game for that series and it for some mm-hmm. reason you know they've had up until this point it was like uh Sega Mega Drive Super Nintendo and then suddenly Sega Pico only and I was like that's yeah. a that's a weird jump to go to yeah. <laughs> because the 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 yeah the like the previous game was like it was almost like a Mega Man clone it was actually really good and then it's all of a sudden mm-hmm edutainment i'm like oh okay um yeah <laughs> so i i i'm assuming so you got the i mean first of all where did you find this thing 
It was in like a little video game store in Akihabara. And what's really funny about it is like, I was actually shopping with Chris Kohler of Kotaku Mm -hmm. and Wired fame. And so he was taking me around shopping because I happened to be there during Tokyo Game Show. So that was perfect because then I had friends in town. (laughs) (laughs) And we were in this little store and I actually saw it. It was like all like saran wrap bundled up. It had Mm. like six games and the system and it just looked like kind of like a pile of crap. (laughs) But I was like, what is that? Like trying to turn it over. And I saw the price tag first and it said 300 yen. And I was like, 300 yen? That's like 275 US. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's nothing. It's like, yeah, three dollars. It would it would and, have probably cost you more <laughs> to post it to yourself than it would to actually buy it. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. And I was looking at it and I kind of Googled it and I was like, mm, it's huge. You yeah. know, it's huge. And the games aren't small either. They're the same size as a Pico game. Because they're books, so, essentially, aren't they? They're, yeah, yeah. They're, they're big. Oh, they're wow. like two VHSs together. That's like, actually bigger than I thought. Because is that in the case that you've got that you're holding? Yeah. There? Okay, because I, yeah. knew, I knew they were sort of cartridges with sort of flippy pager things on the back. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's, yeah, that is like a double VHS size box in there. They're massive. And how many, game, yeah. how many games did you get with six? Six. That, yeah that must be half the library is, is it there's only about 10 or 12 games well, isn't there? I, it was only one copier game and uh, five okay. pico games okay. yeah so you've got Un- so you, unfortunately so you've got the one copier <laughs> game so what what game did you get with it i got melody land melody i'm and guessing that's a, not yep. the not the japanese name for it yeah it is but because th- this is all in katagana Oh, so it's actually so if you if Melody Land. So mm-hmm. it does read actually in English, but it's written. Yeah. In... Oh, okay. That's more than you mm-hmm. last time. You had no idea what it said yeah. last time. <laughs> yeah. And that was the funniest part of the video. And that's exactly when your audio cut out. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so I've done some research. <laughs> yes, you have. So Melody mm-hmm. Land. What? What do you know? How it plays? Um, it has a couple modes. Not all of them I could figure out. I was like, what do I do here? I click on this like alligator and he walks across the screen. Woo! Like, so there's a couple <laughs> things I couldn't really figure out, but I did find a little kid karaoke mode oh. on it. And that was really cool. I, I can't read it here on a fast enough to sing along. I was going to say, it's kind I tried. of like, it's a bit, <laughs> it's great, but you found this thing, but oh, I can't sing along to any of it because I can't read it. And I'm guessing, yeah. I'm guessing it's a song you've never heard in your life either. Yeah, there's a couple that sounded familiar because they're all, I think, like little kid nursery rhyme type songs. So there was one that I was like, oh, my gosh, I know this song. What is it? (laughs) (laughs) But Um, it's pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, it does beg the question, how on earth did you get the? First of all, the the Kapira itself is huge. And secondly... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> even even in the really low resolution uh, Google Hangout that I'm watching, that is ridiculous. That takes up the whole screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did you manage to get that plus six games back? Because I, mean, I mean, did you take an extra suitcase just for video games to bring back with you? <laughs> I mean, kind of. I brought like a backpack and like a really big rolly bag, mm. and then. The rolly bag only was maybe a quarter full of like my clothes and stuff. And then right. everything else was for video games. Right. But so I bought the Copira on like the third day there. So then I had to <laughs> lug it around for another week. <laughs> so they... And it was, <laughs> I thought about leaving it behind several times. <laughs> 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 so basically every time someone went into your room to clean your room they'd see it on the desk and go why on earth have they bought that thing why <laughs> just, probably why? it did never sold and well like in it, the first place <laughs> never mind. it's it's so awkward shaped that it was really difficult to pack around yeah. and it was kind of a pain in the butt the whole trip but i made it home <laughs> And now it's been sitting pride of place somewhere. I mean, <laughs> yeah. with a, somewhere that requires a lot of space. Um, so, yeah. so 
okay, so let, I'm, I'm still trying to get my head around this a little bit. So it's so you've got the the bit the book. Uh, you've got mm -hmm. you, you can see what's being displayed on screen because it it correlates to the pages that are as you turn the page it kind of correlates to what shows on screen but then yeah. what's in what's in front of you what are you pressing okay let me that sounds very clunky as you try to put it together yeah, I know. <laughs> So, okay. sorry for the people doing this on audio, but I will try and so, describe. So you've got sort of it doesn't even all fit. <laughs> <laughs> trying to fit it all on the screen. So you've got some massively oversized uh, Super Famicom style buttons on the on the left hand side, and then mm -hmm. and they're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got what looks like a Magna Doodle thing in front mm -hmm. of you with do you have a stylus or a pen or, or something ah you do have a stylus and then you have a mic yeah. microphone that comes out the side and mm -hmm. then what's the what's the big yellow tab thing on there this yeah this is the power oh, okay so that's just a big big power button and then the mm -hmm. pages as they turn there's like a little almost like punch like punch yeah. card kind of thing yeah, so it's got yeah. like a little punch card kind of thing, or a little almost so that, like it blocks a laser display or something. Yeah, so that's how the system knows what page you're on, so mm -hmm. it knows what's to display on the TV. Mm -hmm. And at least for this game, the TV display looks a lot like this. Okay. And like for the for this one, depending on the mode that you pick, which the different modes are the bananas on the bottom. Are they, are they, it's diff are they diff <laughs> Even though some of the modes, I didn't know what they were doing. Is that like one banana difficulty, two bananas difficulty, or is it just sort of? <laughs> I went, that's what I thought at first, but then when I hit the three banana, is that three? Four banana. <laughs> Four banana was making it so if I selected like the elephant, then I could play the bass drum, or if I selected the giraffe, I could play the cowbell in the in the band. For those that are just listening along, trust me, <laughs> watching makes no help whatsoever. So, yeah, so yeah, so if you press the four bananas, that affects what animal you can control on the. You press the four bananas on the book, controls what animal you can control on the TV. Essentially, yeah. Okay, I, I'm starting to make some <laughs> sense of it. <laughs> and it doesn't help that like I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm playing this game. Like, there's a couple of the levels I have kind of figured out. Yeah. But there's some where I'm like, oh, I got it. And then something happens. And I'm like, oh, I don't got it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> so, th so this is, well, I guess this will help you in, in learning Japanese a little bit for when you next go. You'll know all the essentials mm -hmm. like bananas, uh, elephant playing the <laughs> drum. Um, you can ask someone where the giraffe playing the flute is. It, it'd be perfect. Yeah. And then they can just point... I'll walk into a restaurant <laughs> and just be like, is this a three banana or a four banana? Like... And then they can just sort of communicate in lots of different pointings, telling you to turn left at various points in your life. Yeah. Perfect. This is, this exactly. is, this is, this is perfect. Uh, but what, yeah. I, what I like about this thing, I, I guess it's not just the Kapira, it's the Pico as well. I get the sense that they they didn't they almost didn't know what to do with it. They sort of made it and then thought, yeah. oh, it, can we do more with this? Because obviously with the Capira you have like um, obviously because it's Yamaha you have like um, like keyboard overlays and things for music. Mm -hmm. But like one thing I I, I didn't know into and there you have it still <laughs> still in the packet obviously. <laughs> yep. I've been too afraid to open it because it's still sealed. <laughs> I don't think it's going to hurt the value that much. I don't think so. <laughs> um, but the one thing that you 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 sent it to me, and and I'm looking at it now, and I absolutely adore it. Is um, it's kind of like a, a Pico cooking game, but it's um, yeah, it's like a whole plastic kitchen with i don't know what i don't know how it works i don't know where the sensors are or anything but you've got like a little frying pan with a little, <laughs> little frying it with a fried egg in it but and it's quite it's, it's also it's very japanese you've got like curry and rice and like you've got like um a, a little omelet with some sort of curry sauce and mm -hmm. something on it it's not just like um you know bread and potatoes and things it's, it's sort of very japanese and i have yeah i think like People don't give the Pico enough credit because I think it almost deserves its own place in the museum because it's so much weirder than you think it is. 
<laughs> well, why would we settle for a Pico when we have the Capira? Um, but True. yeah, it, no. I, what I do, what I'll do is when I when we when we when I sort of play this back on YouTube, I'll put this picture on it because I'm looking at it right now and it's absolutely adorable. Because even though this is this is where we, this is where we break down barriers. Because even though I was a boy, I loved my I loved little kitchen and cooking toys. I loved to be able to you know that remember when you used to get um I don't know if you well I don't know if you got them um you'd get like bits of food and they'd have like Velcro on them and they stick together and then you get a little yeah. We're going off topic a little bit, but I, <laughs> I sort of, <laughs> that's what I always loved playing with. I, I remember going around to somebody's house and, and I refused to go home because I was playing kitchen. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that reveals about myself, but still. So, are you? Do you like cooking now? I do, uh, which is a good thing because my wife really? hates it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> if we don't like, if we don't want to be uh, fo- uh, get food poisoning, then it'll be me doing the cooking. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, on- no, honestly, she she cooked a meal once, and she was so proud um, that basically she'd made a dessert, which was like a lemon posset thing, but obviously it has raw egg in it, mm-hmm. and you you have to eat it on the day. But she was so proud of it, and we didn't eat it all, so she kept it for about a week, <laughs> and. Ooh. I won't go any further. I think we know what happened there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, I I will gladly accept the the Yamaha Capera into the museum, but I I have to ask, how would you suggest that we present present it in this this non existent museum? Well, I think it definitely needs to be playable and yes. possibly set up so it's singable. <laughs> That's a very good idea. It, I mean, it, 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 yeah. it's, it's definitely an interactive, um, de- interactive. I'll have to get an NTSC TV because obviously it won't work on a PAL TV over here, but, um, <laughs> That's that's what because that I hadn't considered karaoke because I I had pictured essentially trying to hack it so that the um, the keyboard part of it, the sort of mm-hmm. bit that goes onto the Magna Doodle style thing, is blown up, and then you have like a Tom Hanks in Big kind of situation where you're you're able to play yes! it with with your feet. But I hadn't considered carry. Ka- admittedly. It would it wouldn't go down too well if nobody can read Japanese. So doesn't matter. Just have some alcohol. <laughs> okay, so this is an adult only museum now. Okay, this is this is going well. <laughs> this is going well. Well, we could do like a night where it's the Kopira opening welcome party. Well, no, and that's karaoke time. You're opening up all new avenues here because obviously where. <laughs> Where do you put the Atari porn games? They can't just be out in the open. You need to have a little adult section. And then it... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then you have basically like a little Japanese karaoke set. Yeah, you know, that's what we need to... we all we need to do is build a little Japanese style karaoke cubby hole and then with a <laughs> with a bar attached so you can get your sake mm-hmm. and your Japanese beer and then you can go attempt to sing uh Kapira karaoke games without knowing what any of the Japanese is. Yeah, it'd be so much fun. This sound, this <laughs> this sounds so much better than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> no party like a Kopira party. Well, exactly. Well, yes, I will. I will happily accept that, and I will take in, into account uh, how we can present it. But uh, with, with that, I shall close the museum for our mm. first episode. Uh, I shall close it again for our first episode, second time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but to, off the topic of the museum, so uh, what are you playing at the moment, Kinsey? Apart I'm from the Capira. Still playing, yeah, I mean, every day. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm still playing Pokemon Let's Go mm. because I can't stop. Eevee or Pikachu? <laughs> Pikachu. Okay. I, I got um, Let's Go Eevee and I've, I've, I've finished the main storyline and I, I have to admit, I'm I'm a bit torn. I I, I like it, but I'm not sure. I I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just a bit torn on it. I, there are certain elements to it that I love. There are certain elements to it where I, I need to get over, shall we say. Like, yeah. Because I, <laughs> I avoided the hype. I avoided knowing anything about it. And then when I first played it, and then I was like, oh, you can't do wild battles. This is oh, weird. Yeah. But... As I got into it, I started to enjoy it more, and now I'm sort of trading with Pokemon Go and all sorts of things. And I, I, I haven't done much with the um, the Pokeball controller yet because I know you, I know you can put a Pokemon in it and go walk around with it, but um, mm-hmm. like as a controller, I really hate. 
hate it. I like when- Yeah, I've played it for a few hours with the Pokeball and it's not that comfortable. It's a little small, so yeah. like you get a little crampy and the selection on the stick isn't great. So no. sometimes I would pick something and click it and it would instantly like move to the next choice yes. down and I'm like no I didn't want to do tackle <laughs> <laughs> when when you have when you have the select button the same as the navigational joystick it doesn't really work and I understand you know there's only so many buttons you could fit. I mean the fact that they managed to fit two buttons and a and a uh, directional stick on a pokeball is impressive but <laughs> yeah it, it's not the it's not the easiest way of playing at all in fact I I kind of I think one of the reasons why I was a bit disappointed with it is um, I I mean, I've been waiting since I was 12 for a console full Pokemon game. And then mm-hmm. you find it's kind of better playing it in handheld mode just because... <laughs> I've been playing it in handheld mode this whole exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> because you sort of like, oh, this is fun flipping the Joy-Con to control. And then after a while, it's like, yeah, I just want to play it because also when you when it's in when it's on the TV, you have to play it with a single Joy-Con, which is really mm-hmm. awkward. It's like I don't yeah, know why you, it is. I don't know if you can play it with the Pro Controller or not. Um, but maybe I that? haven't tried. No, I haven't. But yeah, you sort of um, you you play it when you're playing it in handheld mode. It plays how you think it would play if you've played the 3DS games, mm-hmm. and then. When I put it on the TV, I was like, okay, I'll clip the Joy-Cons into the controller and I'll play it. And then I was like, oh, it doesn't work. You have to play with a single Joy-Con. It's kind of like, I think that's yeah. wh- I think that's why I was really disappointed with it. It's just, I've been waiting so long for a console game and then it's essentially mm-hmm. a handheld game. I think yeah, that, and then I, it's like not, it's not quite there. But no. in handheld mode, I super enjoyed it. Yeah, and I, I think that's what I needed time to get over. I needed to get over the fact that it's it's a it's a stopgap it's kind of it's Mm -hmm. it's almost like a tech demo it's kind of like well we you know we did pokemon go and it wasn't really nintendo it was it was um someone else doing it and then we need to transition into the switch somehow so let's kind of mash the two together and that's what you come out with Mm -hmm. and then just accept it as it's not a main series game it's not it's not a complete remake of the first games. It's just, it's Kanto with Pokemon Go and things like that. There's no bike. You ride yeah. You ride Pokemon instead. There's no Safari Zone. There's the Pokemon. And after, once mm. you, I think once you get over fighting that it's, um, it's, it's meant to be a remake of Yellow, you're like, oh, okay, actually mm-hmm. it, it is pretty good. But if you go into it going, this is not the same as my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you get, definitely. Then you get, well, you get a bit rage with it, like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but what's so? What's after? After? Um, actually, well, actually, because it's coming up to Christmas when we're filming this, this might go out after Christmas. Mm-hmm. But um, is is there plans to delve into the backlog at all over the holidays? Well, I did just start playing God of War on the ah, PS4. The PS4 version, okay. So yes, I'm very excited for that because it's like it won game of the year at the game award so now i'm like mm-hmm. well it's probably pretty good like <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, i'm really yeah, liking it so far <laughs> yeah well, um... i am really liking it so far but i was afraid to like jump off pokemon if i jump off before i beat it yeah i might not ever beat it <laughs> yeah well that's the thing um yeah because i sort of I beat the main storyline and you, you don't need to be that high a level for the for the Elite Four. You only need to be like fifty five mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. And then I went and I tried oh, to yeah. I went to try and beat Mewtwo, uh, who's level seventy. And I mm-hmm. I did the obviously you do the thing where you save the game before you battle it. Because that, actually that's one thing that re- we're going back to Pokemon Go now. Um <laughs> <laughs> one thing that really annoyed me is the like the legendary battles because firstly, like um i obviously you save the game before you encounter the legendary that's kind of mm-hmm. that's instilled in you from the game boy games oh yeah but like in at least in the the older games like you beat you don't have to beat the legendary uh pokemon you you sort of bring the level down you can put it to sleep you can paralyze it and then you can try and catch it with this you have to beat it first and then you need to try and uh, catch yeah. it yeah 
and with on Moltres, I I think I think I remember I was I was raging on it about Twitter, and you were liking some of the posts. Um, I I beat it, and then I, <laughs> I think I went through twenty eight Ultra Balls, and every oh my gosh, yeah, every Golden Raspberry. I think a Golden Raspberry excellent throw with an Ultra Ball, and it still broke out. And it's like, how is this a thing? And it's the same with yeah, I... <laughs> it's the same with Mewtwo because you go and, and you've got the Master Ball, which is great. But you can't just use the master ball. Like in in it didn't in the old games, it didn't matter what level you you could be level twenty or whatever. Obviously, you wouldn't have got past the mm -hmm. um, elite four at that. But you could take any mm -hmm. level Pokemon and just throw the master ball, and that's it. No, you have to beat Mewtwo, yeah. and he is hard. Uh, oh yeah. So it's kind of like oh well, I guess I've got fifteen levels of grinding to do before I can catch yep. Mewtwo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I do think that like any of the higher level Pokemon, it's got to be super random and mm. whether you catch it or not. Like I don't, I w I'm starting to think that the excellent throw doesn't actually get you a better chance of catching it. It just gives you a multiplier Yeah. when like for your XP, that's all it does. Because... But every time I'm just like, but it was so good. Why can't <laughs> I catch it? Like, <laughs> well, that's the thing, you know, after, after 28, I, cause I was, I throw a golden raspberry and I use an ultra ball and an excellent throw. It's like, so anything short of a master ball, this is the this is the best you could possibly do, and it didn't work. Yeah. And then obviously I I used up my whole inventory, and I was like, all right, okay, I'm just gonna have to turn it off. I like the second time around, I like caught it second time with a great ball, and you're like, Are you, seriously? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> actually for my because i yeah i'm i, I i'm kind of i'm finished that now for my christmas backlog i'm actually go because um i started working for ubersoft a few months ago and um mm -hmm. the big thing for my family is the wii we still love the wii and yeah because we're in ubersoft we're still making wii games in 2018 so just dance mm -hmm. 2019 has just come out on wii <laughs> and that's what we'll be playing in fact it's it, nice it, it sells better on the Wii. This is really weird. The Wii is 13 years old, and it sells better on the Wii than the PS4, the Xbox One, and the Wii U combined. And really? Th yeah. It's Well, certainly in the <laughs> UK anyway. And it's like, seriously? Yeah. That came out in 2006, and that's still yeah. a console that people are buying games for, which I... It's, a, it's another thing. That, that'll probably find its way in the museum at some point. And it's one that... Yeah. Case, Casey, who has a complete Wii collection, probably curses us because we mm -hmm. keep releasing Just Dance games. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep buying them. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're still fun. Um, but yeah. yes, I think that brings our episode to a close. So all that's left for me to do is thank my mm -hmm. guest, Kenzie. Thank you for coming on twice mm -hmm. to chat. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, thank you, of course, for your general, uh, your ge very generous donation twice. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> Until, but until next time, guys, <laughs> we'll see you later.